Hello everybody, my name is Nagasaki, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make your first weapon in a township tail. Before we can craft, we first need to pick what kind of weapon we want to wield, from dual wielding wakizashis all the way to becoming death itself. To keep things simple, I will be keeping things PC and quest version friendly, meaning no heaviest weapon molds will be used. The first thing I will be covering is the tools required to create our first weapon. In order to gather ingots, you will first thing need a pickaxe. You can craft a flint pickaxe using only a stick and a piece of flint attached to the front side. The next tool you will need is a hammer. When forging, the blades will come out as dull and will need to be sharpened by smithing them using the hammer. Using another stick and a rock will allow you to craft a crude hammer. You can always upgrade your tools over time at the forge. Now for the first weapon we will be creating is the standard short sword. For a basic weapon costing only 6 ingots to craft, I'd say most of the community has used this weapon at least once in our adventuring careers. To craft the short sword, you will first need to find yourself the mold for the blacksmith. Molds can be most commonly found in the mines, however it can also be obtained from chests located in the mountain path as well as the dust bowl. The next thing we need is our ingots. For simplicity's sake, I will be using copper, which can be found throughout the mines as well as the quarry located above the mine. After inserting our mold, we will put our ingots inside and allow the forge to smelt. After a few moments, our blade will exit the other side of the smelter. We will then take the blade outside and put it on top of the coals, allowing it to heat up. After the blade turns a bright color, it is ready to be smithed. Placing the blade on top of the anvil, we will begin hammering it with our hammer. Depending on the material you are smithing and the material that your hammer is made out of, it will either increase or decrease the time it takes to smith. After hitting the sword a few more times, you'll see a white outline appear around the sword, letting you know that it's complete. The second weapon we will be taking a look at is one of my personal favorites, dual wielding daggers. Currently there are four types of dagger blades in the game, curved, straight, kunai, and long, each blade having a different ingot cost. For the video I will be using the curved dagger. The handles required for this weapon are special as they will allow you to stack the daggers into their own bubble to help you save on space. You can find these handles located in chests in the bandit camps as well as the chests located in the mines. Once we have our mold placed into the forge, we can throw in our ingots. And after the smithing is complete, the last step is just to assemble the weapon. All you need to do is connect the handle and the blade. The next weapon we will be creating is the Grim Reaper Scythe. This weapon is a bit more complex than the last two, but overall is my favorite in terms of damage and looks. The weapon will cost 18 ingots in total. You will also need another special hander which can be crafted at the carpentry station. The molds required are as follows. The scythe mold, the bow blade mold, and the two-way piece connector mold. After smithing our blades, we will begin assembling the weapons. The connector will need to go on top first. After you can connect the scythe and the bow blade like so. Of 
For our fourth weapon, we will be going back to the basics and creating a rapier. The total cost for the rapier will be 11 ingots. You will need three molds in order to create this weapon. The fancy guard mold, the cross guard mold, and the rapier blade mold. You can either use the small wooden handle or a metal handle found in the chest located throughout the world. Once our blade, cross guard, and fancy guard are finished in the forge, we need to take the rapier blade over to the smithing station. After smithing the blade, we can finish crafting our weapon by first taking the handle and connecting the guard following with the fancy guard. Finally, the rapier blade. The final weapon we will be taking a look at is another one of my top 5 favorites. The anime protagonist weapon will require 47 ingots in total as well as a long metal handle which can be found in the chest located in the mines as well as the mountain pass and dust bowl. We will need 5 molds in total. The greatsword mold, the four-way connector piece mold, the long bent decorative piece mold, the short bent decorative piece mold, as well as the Grand Great Sword Guard Mold. After gathering all of our molds and smelting all of our ingots, we will need to smith our blade once more. After smithing is complete, we will begin assembling the weapon by first adding the four-way connector piece on top of the handle, Next, we will take the greatsword guard and place it on top of the four-way connector piece. We will then take the two long decorative pieces and attach them to the bottom of the four-way connector piece. Next, you'll add the two small decorative pieces on top of the four-way connector. Then finally, you will add the blade on top of the guard, thus completing the anime protagonist weapon. I hope you guys enjoyed this little guide on how to create your first weapon in a township tale. If you enjoyed, make sure to check out one of the other videos up on the screen now. And remember, if you haven't heard it yet today, I love you, I appreciate you, and thank you all so much for watching.